Welcome to a brief tour of the constellations and stars from a perspective at about 42 degrees north latitude. I'm recording this from the Chicagoland area. And specifically, I want to help you learn about 20 stars and constellations relatively shortly here. And they will be stars and constellations that are easily seen in an extremely light polluted area like the Chicagoland region where the scene conditions are far from optimal. So I'm going to show you three different views. This is a view from spring. So I'm starting with spring. And the main reason for that is because I want to use the Big Dipper as a guide to help us navigate to different stars and constellations. Everybody can find the Big Dipper. Even in a light polluted area like this, you can see that wonderful asterism in the sky pretty much any time of the year. And these dates and times all correspond to this particular view we see here. Now on this slide I'm going to show you these stars and the associated constellations. So let's go ahead and dive into that. We first consider the Big Dipper and the end of the Dipper itself are the pointer stars that point to Polaris, the North Star. All the other stars orbit, not orbit, but seem to rotate around that star. So it's easy to find the North Star because we simply follow those two end stars and it essentially points to Polaris, the North Star. Polaris is relatively easily seen and it is part of Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper. So now we have Ursa Major, we have Polaris and Ursa Minor. Now, considering the Big Dipper again, we're now going to arc along the handle, this arced handle, through Mizar. That's the second from the end of the, of the handle. It's actually a double, double star system. And it's going to arc to Arcturus. So we're going to go ahead and arc to Arcturus. Isn't that catchy? And Arcturus is the bright star, the alpha star of Bootes. And so now we have another star in constellation. And once you arc to Arcturus, you can go ahead and speed on to Spica. So here we continue on to Spica of Virgo. So there you go. Next, we're going to follow the two top stars of the Big Dipper. And that's going to take us to Capella of Auriga. So Capella of Auriga. What else? Well, if we pass through Mizar and kind of kitty corner across the, the bucket of the dipper itself, you will approximately hit Castor or Pollux. It's kind of a, there's two stars that look whose apparent magnitudes, the apparent brightness are almost exactly the same, and that's of Gemini. So that might enable you to find Castor or Pollux of Gemini. Also, we can follow some more stars. These, these two stars, of the, the, the first two of the Dipper, and follow them down to Regulus. Regulus is a bright star, the alpha star of Leo. So there you go. One more, if you've followed them down to Leo, let's go the exact opposite direction and find Deneb of Cygnus. Now that doesn't show up very well in this view, but I'm showing you how to find Deneb from the Big Dipper, which will be a lot more visible in the winter sky. So we'll encounter that again shortly. So there is, like I said, using the Big Dipper and making all kinds of lines and angles, arcs through the Big Dipper to guide us to various stars and constellations. And there you have eight and eight. So you're building your repertoire up very quickly. We now move on to a typical view from this location in, in autumn. So we have the dates and times associated with the view that we see here. Note that in each of the three views, south is at the bottom, which just means from our perspective looking at the screen here, we're looking south. A lot of times you may want to look north. You'd have to kind of like rotate this thing around. And that's the view you'd have because again, this is straight up if you're looking south. This is straight up, and as you continue on, this top part is looking straight in back of you. So you can make that adjustment as necessary. But what I want to do again is 
is highlight Ursa Major, there it is. And again, we can find Polaris from Ursa Major, the pointer stars. Now the next constellation I want to find here is, is another wonderful, beautiful asterism known as Cassiopeia, the constellation Cassiopeia, also an asterism, is very easily recognized W, that if you find a, li a line from Ursa Major to Polaris, if you kind of keep going but just angle down a little bit, if you're north and kind of looking up, it's just angled down typically, all right? And in any case, if you just continue on through Polaris and look around, you'll, you'll see that beautiful W. So that's Cassiopeia, almost unmistakable. So it doesn't take much to, to find that. So you have to start with something that you can easily find or you'll get frustrated. So I'm doing that for you. Polaris, it's a given. Cassiopeia, almost as easy. Now, once you have Cassiopeia, you see this W, and one side is a little shallower in the 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 wing or whatever you want to call it and the other's a little steeper right and i always just would tend to think of the, the the shallower side here let's follow those stars and see what we get well they point directly to murfak or murfak uh, in of perseus so it's not very far away the constellation perseus and the alpha star now if we follow these other two we hit inevitably a very awesome, wonderful constellation, Pegasus. And I'm showing this kind of pointing to Alpharats, which is a large star here. It's actually part of the Andromeda galaxy. So Andromeda and Pegasus are, are connected together from Alpharats. And you may, by following these stars, just kind of hit the center of the Great Square. You can find the Great Square. So then find this star, you'll also see Andromeda. So there's two new constellations for you. And the Great Square is really quite large in the sky and very beautiful once you identify it. They're all relatively easily seen. And by the way, the constellation Andromeda, Spiral Galaxy, largest galaxy of our local group is right about there. So you can actually see it with the unaided eye, but again, in light polluted areas, not too easy. With binoculars, not a problem if you know where to look. I just showed you. So that's the great square of Pegasus and Andromeda. And now if we follow the two stars on the other side, we can relatively easy, and these are pretty large spans of the sky. So you may not see all this in one view. But following those stars, we'll get to Fomalat, a fairly, fairly famous star with where a actual exoplanet has been imaged. And it's of the constellation Pisces Austrinus. I think that's how you say it. Don't say that too often because it's not a very super well-known constellation, but there's another one for you. And then in addition to the great score of Pegasus and Andromeda, which are really highlighting the view of the sky, perhaps highlighting it not quite as much as another asterism in addition to the great square known as the Summer Triangle. And here it is, the Summer Triangle. And this tends to almost be a dominant view. Once you see these three stars, it's hard to avoid them. They're especially Vega because it is a magnitude zero star, apparent magnitude zero which just means it's very bright. And so you have Deneb, Deneb of Cygnus the Swan. There's the, the wings of the swan, the tail end and the, toward the, the head here. It's also called the Northern Cross. That's an asterism. So once you see that, it's a very fun thing to look at. And then Vega of Lyrae and Altair of Aquila. They make a, a three-star system that's super nice in the light polluted skies of Chicagoland because everything else seems to be washed out around them and they punch through very prominently. So that's a very beautiful set. And you now have uh, six or seven more stars and constellations under your belt. Okay, and now let's check out the winter sky. And here we have the dates and times corresponding to this view. 
our location here and this is probably my favorite time of the year because not just because it's Christmas but we have dominant in the sky and very very beautiful my favorite constellation Orion now I could maybe try and give you some guides to Orion but that'd be kind of like giving you guides to the Big Dipper it's one of the easiest things to see so when it's winter and Orion's in the sky it'll pretty much be unmistakable you won't have any trouble seeing it they are very large stars relatively young and they're punching through the view the obscured view of water vapor and light pollution in our skies so we're going to use Orion to to guide us in this last view and if you're at all familiar with Orion, Orion the hunter here's his arm being raised up this is his belt three stars are his belt real bright stars Betelgeuse and Rigel those are uh, really good stars to, to know this is a, a red supergiant and a blue supergiant you can see the difference in color with the naked eye so if you follow the belt where does the belt lead you but to the very brightest apparent magnitude star in the sky what appears the brightest is Sirius Sirius of Canis Major so there's another star in constellation for you just follow the belt of Orion and if you follow the shoulders of Orion through Betelgeuse you will arrive at Canis Minor uh, and the star is Procyon so we have Sirius and Procyon Canis Major Canis Minor very easily very easy to find using Orion as a guide and now we're gonna trace out what's known as the winter hexagon once you learn the winter hexagon you will again not be able to avoid seeing it and it will really increase your arsenal of stars and constellations so we start with Rigel and go to Sirius Rigel of course of Orion Sirius of Canis Major and then we move on to Canis Minor Procyon and from there we go to Pollux and Castor that twin set of stars and from there we're going to shoot over to Capella of Auriga which we've already encountered and then from there you can probably anticipate the next big star Aldebaran of Taurus and here's the Hyades a very close and relatively loose open cluster and then we continue on to complete the hexagon going back to Rigel and by the way this belt if you follow the belt the other way the Pleiades the seven sisters another very beautiful open cluster is about right there not shown in this particular map but you can see the hexagon they're all very bright stars with Orion uh, proudly displaying its little lights in all their glory and if you want connection with what we've discussed before remember here's the Big Dipper and so we can use a couple of the guides we did before starting with Mizar passing kitty corner across the Dipper to Castor or Pollux doesn't you probably won't be sure which one you're hitting and then go across the two top stars to get to Capella of Auriga but honestly you won't even need this help because when you see Orion you'll be able to follow the sequence as I showed you and there you have another uh, six stars and about six constellations a couple of which we've already encountered for a total of about 20 stars and constellations so if you'll learn what I just guided you through you will be fairly knowledgeable uh, of the night sky that will suddenly take on a new meaning for you because you feel a little ownership with it since you can follow your way around the sky a little better. So there you go. Hope that was helpful.